It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And this is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Josh Woodison with you. It is 745. And our interview with Byron Stauffer brought to you by our friends at Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Byron, last time you and I talked, there was a lot going on, and there's still a lot going on as far as uh, opportunities go for people to either get some assistance or to enter into some things to get some money to get going on some projects, it sounds like. Well, good morning, Josh. Uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to, to talk this morning. Uh, yeah, the uh, you know our partners, um, local financial institutions, local banks, you know, we're still trying to get the word out uh, relative to uh, a lot of the state uh, and federal programs that are available out there. Um, you know, currently we have uh, opened the uh, small business recovery uh, program, and uh, businesses can apply for grants uh, depending on their their annual revenues up to uh, up to fifty thousand dollar grants. I I got a call from. Uh, a local uh, entrepreneur here yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, woman-owned business. Uh, they applied in the first round and received a grant for received a, a, a an email uh, notifying her of her approval for twenty five thousand dollar grant. Oh, that's great to hear. <clears throat> so, um, uh, some of the details from the first round. I believe there were uh, over forty nine hundred um, approvals. Uh, statewide um, in Indiana County, we had uh, 18 uh, in the first round, um, and I'm pretty confident that they're they're doing it by not only need but uh, proportionality. So you know the bigger communities are going to get the the larger numbers of of, of grants. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but the first round was for disadvantaged businesses, woman-owned businesses, businesses located in in certain. Um, areas that you know have some 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 real need and uh but there is currently an, a, a second round uh, a final round uh, that will be open i believe there's a roughly 100 million uh plus available statewide and um and uh, any uh interested uh uh business um that, that would qualify uh would need to uh uh, either contact here in southwestern Pennsylvania, either the uh, the Progress Fund, um, uh, or uh, um, you certainly can contact uh, the Indiana County uh, Center for Economic Operations at www.indianacountyceo.com or mm-hmm. on our phone at uh, uh, 724-465-2662. But anybody that's interested uh, that is really still struggling as part of the COVID um, you know, certainly our restaurants, um, you know, a lot of our small businesses are really struggling still. And um, there is help out there through these grant programs still. We're, we're also monitoring, um, you know, what's, what's the conversations that, you know, are and aren't going on in, in Washington, D.C. relative to a p- potential phase four. Um, and so there could be more stimulus uh, programs coming out, uh, hopefully, uh, in the next uh, few weeks to, couple, you know, next within the next month or so. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody already applied for these grants, we heard that they would not need to apply again, or should they apply again? Uh, That's our understanding as well, Josh, that if uh, they received a confirmation or, you know, have have applied for in the first round and did not uh, receive a a positive decision, uh, they would not necessarily need to uh, reapply. Um, But I... I would certainly encourage um, anybody that, that questions whether or not their application was successfully submitted or something along those those lines to, to reach out to whichever uh, community development financial institution they may have applied through and um, and, and go ahead and just, just double-check that their application is still pending. Mm-hmm. We had talked off, Mike, about the county's revolving loan fund and we understand, and as I understand it, I took a look at the agenda today for the Indiana County Commissioners meeting. That's going to be on the agenda, I believe, for today. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that revolving loan fund. Well, uh, it's probably been a couple months already, but the, the commissioners did authorize the uh, uh, Indiana County Office of Planning Development to submit an application uh-huh. uh, to uh, to the. Uh, 
uh, U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. Uh, Indiana County Commissioners have administered revolving loan, federal revolving loan funds for over 25 years, and as part of the CARES Act, the county was awarded uh, $1.23 million, um, and uh, so that, that has been announced, uh, formally announced, um, but the commissioners do need to take formal action today to accept that uh, those funds. And what that will do is will allow us to deploy, um, you know, 1.23 million of additional loan funds uh, in the form of working capital loans, uh, low interest loans, um, uh, you know, really to try to help businesses, you know, uh, once, once, and again, we admit too that uh, as the grants are still available, it, it, it's hard to for businesses to want to accept loans. Uh, but there are companies that have exhausted some of their grant opportunities and uh, either want to diversify, um, you know, and, and look at different ways of doing business. And certainly with our partners at the SBDC, uh, uh, Small Business Development Center, and, and maybe looking at new new ways of, um, of, you know, procuring customers or new lines of business or expanding their business, um, these, these funds can be a, a real you know, real help to those businesses. And so I, I know the, the commissioners were pleased to uh, get the award, uh, but we have this administrative task uh, later today that they'll need to formally accept it. But mm -hmm. we could do loans anywhere from uh, fifty to 100000 in some cases, and low interest, uh, expedited application, low fees, and um, hopefully uh, businesses will call us again at 724-465-2662. And as you said, this is a very good opportunity. Again, if businesses have exhausted their grant opportunities, they can go in for this. Granted, it's a loan, but it's going to be at a very low interest rate. So for them, it actually is going to be a, a very big benefit to them. And I'm sure that a lot of businesses in the past have taken advantage of these of these loans offered up. Yeah, over the course, uh, we had some big projects in the 90s uh, that the county took on. We, we secured these funds. We made loans. The loans were repaid back. Um, for example, uh, we made we made some loans to, to Gorel Windows uh, back in the day, and Gorel paid the funds back. And we've been able to loan these funds over and over again, and we've done um, over 70 loans over the last, uh, over the last 15 years or so. So... Um, so the, we do have funds, um, you know, and a lot of these small businesses around the county have taken advantage of them. And, uh, um, but uh, we're not to replace banks, for example. These are oftentimes we're uh, lo uh, subordinate to, to what a bank might do. So banks, you know, are generally the, the best place to find money. Uh, but, you know, when you have deals that, um, uh, you know, that need, uh, you know, banks don't, generally fund 100% of a project, so uh, we can come in and subordinate a loan and take a second lien position and try to get help get a project over the finish line. So our, our funds are complementary mm -hmm. and, um, and try to help get, uh, get, get projects done. So, um, so yeah, call us, and uh, we do have monies to lend, and um, we're, we're glad to be uh, a partner with these businesses to try to help them uh, uh, get, through, get through this pandemic. You're listening to Indiana in the Morning. Josh Woodison with you. We're talking with Byron Stoffer about some of the uh, financial assistance that is available for businesses out there. We've been talking about the Revolving Loan Fund and some other grant opportunities that have come across the uh, the area as well. One of the things that was announced uh, a few, I'd say a couple of months ago, was the uh, the Ben Franklin Big Idea Contest. And last time we talked, we just had enough time to mention it briefly. Maybe you can now... Uh, talk to us a little bit more about what the Ben Franklin Big Idea Contest is all about. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Uh, yeah, in mid-July, um, the Center for Economic Operations, uh, we participated in a virtual uh, announcement of the Ben Franklin Technology Partners of Central and Northern Pennsylvania have offered to Indiana County, um, but also our, our neighbors in Jefferson, Clearfield, and Cambria, um, an opportunity for fifty thousand dollar prize uh, for that that next uh, big idea. So Ben Franklin is looking for tech innovators, small manufacturers located in the four county area who are developing new products, processes, or software applications. Um, but if if I didn't mention something that maybe you have an idea on, certainly uh, 
you know, reach out um, to either the, the CEO affiliates, um, which are the commissioners, the Chamber of Commerce, the Indiana County Development Corp., our Tourist Bureau, and certainly IUP. Um, and in this case, it would be the Small Business Development Center. But, uh, but also, um, the fifty thousand dollars is is one prize. It'll be essentially like a not like a Shark Tank, but like a business plan competition where mm -hmm. the business will present uh, to judges. Um, you know what their idea is, and uh, uh, applications are being accepted now through September 21st at 5 p.m. Um, interested entrepreneurs uh, can, uh, and these can be startups, these can be um, existing businesses, somebody that just has an idea. Uh, but uh, the entry form and the rules are at online at bigidea.benfranklin.org. So that's Big Idea dot benfranklin.org and uh, again you can call the center for economic operations 724-465-2662 and, and there's some other other prizes um you know free consultation and webinars and coaching to prepare uh for uh, a date in november uh, which is probably going to be virtual but uh but basically, uh, the entrepreneur will have um, some time to present their idea. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also a $2,500 People's Choice Award. So, uh, so maybe somebody doesn't win, but, um, uh, but, but you know, so there's many, uh, many other, in addition to the money, there's other consultation and mentoring and training uh, to get people um, research and development opportunities and other funding. Um, but the, the hope is that uh, entrepreneurs will want to commercialize their idea. Yeah. And, um, and again, uh, the application's open until September 21st at 5 p.m. I would imagine that whenever they do go up in front of these um, judges, we'll say, they will get the, not, uh, the chance to not only pitch their uh, business ideas, but they're also going to get some, uh, some real-world knowledge, I would assume, probably from the judges as well. They might have uh, some critique from, uh, from them about maybe you could tweak this or do this in your presentation to make it pop a little bit better. I imagine there may be some educational opportunities just in that judging round alone. Well, I, I think even between September 21st and then ultimately, you know, when the finalists are determined, you know, there'll, there'll be some, uh, some vetting. Um, so from, from say, uh, late September until November, there will be a lot of opportunities for mentoring and coaching and getting businesses prepared you know, to make their pitch to the judges, but then even after it, I think as um, as well, that that hopefully, um, yeah, there there are some uh, networking and some relationships built that these businesses can can continue on. Even if you're not a winner, mm -hmm. um, ultimately of the fifty thousand um, dollars, then um, you know may, there's other resources and there's other opportunities to try to help business get up and running. And um, so it's one of the things that you know we've been talking about at the CEO is how can we, and it's very difficult in these pandemic times, but even pre COVID, you know, we've been, um, you know, trying to find ways <clears throat> to spur more entrepreneurship here in the County, more startups, uh, more business opportunities. And um, certainly, uh, you know, we have a lot of bright minds over at the university. Um, so we're, we're, we're looking at students, but also there's existing businesses here that have other ideas and new products uh, new things that they want to do, so it, it's not limited to to anyone. It, anyone can apply uh, as long as they plan on commercializing their business and they're located in one of the four uh, four counties. So, um, so it's a great opportunity uh, to really to really launch. Uh, no pun intended. The, the the big idea contest. Right, Byron. We're right up against it. So thanks a lot for joining us this morning here on Indiana in the morning. All the best to you. All right, appreciate it, Josh. And one last thing, uh, respond to your census. That's uh, we, we need to really count everybody here in Indiana County, and everybody have a great day. All right, thanks, Byron. Thanks, Byron. Thanks, Byron.